So, you decided to switch to Linux. Problem is, there are a lot of Linux distributions out there. So, where do you start? Now, choice is not inherently a bad thing, but let's be honest, it can be very daunting for Linux newcomers to find the right distro. Now, there are some good tools out there available to help people choose. There's a website called librehunt.org, which poses a series of questions to people that help them narrow down among a uh, list of some of the most popular distributions out there. Thing is, even after it narrows things down, you're usually going to be left with quite a few that could work for you. So, we're still left with the question, where do you start? There isn't a one distribution that solves everything for everybody. But there is one Linux distribution that I highly recommend any Linux newcomer takes a look at. It may not be for everybody, you may not decide to stick with it long term, but as the best first distribution for Linux newcomers, I can very much recommend Elementary OS. Now let me preface the rest of this video a bit by saying that this is not geared towards people who have been using Linux for a long time, this is specifically catered towards Linux newcomers, people who like have no idea what Linux distribution is right for them. They're looking for somewhere to start and maybe they'll move on from there, but this is intended to recommend what I believe is the best starting point, which may also wind up being their own forever distro, as some people like to put it. That being said, if you have been using Linux for a long time, you know what works best for you. Stick with what you've been using if you want. But at the same time, if you haven't tried elementary OS before, maybe give it a go. Anyway, let's dive into why I believe elementary is the best for Linux newcomers. The Linux world is very well known for the fact that people are able to tweak and customize their systems to their heart's content and do whatever they want to with their computers. Elementary, on the other hand, as one Jason Evangelo put it, is refreshingly restrictive. While most Linux distributions do allow you to customize and tweak your system, Elementary does not embrace that. That's not to say that it's impossible, you know, it's still your computer, you can do with it whatever you like, but Elementary OS is designed simply on providing an excellent out-of-the-box experience. Oftentimes, people like to argue in favor of distributions like Linux Mint for newcomers, because Windows very apparently has the largest user base of any desktop operating system at about 90% market share. And, you know, people like to say Linux Mint is one of, if not the best for newcomers, because the interface is similar to Windows. I mean, if Windows has such a huge user base, they must be doing something right with their interface, right? Not necessarily. Now, I get where people are coming from, because if it's more familiar, it lets people ease in better, and that could very well be true. At the same time, if the interface is familiar, they might go in expecting other things to be familiar or the same as it works on Windows, when it often doesn't. On the other hand, if they go in trying a more unique interface, like with what Elementary has, or like the GNOME desktop, they're gonna know right off the bat, okay, this is different. I should be expecting things to be different. And then when they are familiar to Windows, they can be more pleasantly surprised. Maybe I'm just optimistic, but that's what I believe. And Elementary, definitely provides a very intuitive interface, whether you're coming from Windows or not. If you are coming from Windows and you're used to that sort of workflow, it will take getting used to, but it is a very intuitive interface. 
Elementary OS comes with the Pantheon desktop environment, which is also designed by the Elementary team. Pantheon has a panel at the top with an applications launcher on the left, a clock slash calendar combo in the center, and then system indicators on the top right. At the bottom, you have the dock, which allows for quick access to your favorite apps, as well as any that you currently have open. The application windows themselves have a close button on the top left, maximize button on the top right, and then any window specific controls in between. Now, it probably seems a little weird for close and maximize to be on different sides of the window, but it can help prevent things such as accidentally clicking close when you want to click maximize, for example, so it can help prevent mistakes like that. One thing people often like to complain about with elementary is that there's no minimize button. Oftentimes, they just kind of leave it at that and don't elaborate why they have such a huge problem with it, but people do complain that there's no minimize button. With elementary OS, there's just significantly less emphasis on minimizing windows. The applications that are designed for elementary are built to save their state when you close them. So let's say if, you're, if you have a text document open and you close that, when you reopen it, it'll be right back where you left it. So with apps that are made for elementary, there's not usually a need to minimize them in the first place. That being said, not every application is made for elementary. So what do you do if you need to keep one of those running, but you want it out of the way? You can still minimize applications. You can either click the applications icon in the dock, or you can use the keyboard shortcut Super plus H. Super being the Windows key on many keyboards for those who aren't familiar. Alternatively, you can move that app to another workspace via the multitasking view. On a fresh installation of Elementary OS, there will be a button on the dock on the far left that, when hovered over, says multitasking view. You click on that, Get a nice overview of all the windows that you have open, as well as workspaces shown at the bottom. You can also access it with Super S or Super and Down Arrow. Each workspace is dynamically created as a window is added to it, and it makes for a great way to, well, multitask. Speaking of the Super key and keyboard shortcuts, if you press the Super key by itself, you get a nice overview of keyboard shortcuts that you can use. One more thing to mention, in the file manager, you only need to click once to open files and folders. I will admit, that's really weird at first, because if you're coming from Windows, you double click to do all that. And only single clicking, that's uh, that does take time to get used to. You know, old habits are hard to break. But I do believe that that makes more sense and it's more consistent. When you open an app from the application launcher, you click once. When you open an app from your dock, you click once. File manager, you open a folder with one click, you open files with one click. On Windows, on the other hand, if you launch an app from the taskbar or the start menu, you click it once. But if you're opening something straight from your desktop, or if you're working in the Windows, Explorer, File Explorer, you double click on those. So in some places you single click, in other places you double click. That's not very intuitive or consistent. Unlike on Windows, you are not going to get your software by going off to a website and just downloading an executable and installing that way. With Elementary, you're going to find most of what you need through the App Center. Similar to the Google Play Store or the App Store on iOS devices, although Linux did it first, App Center acts as the place where you can browse, install, and update your applications. Most of them are available for free, but there are some that are available for purchase. That being said, paid apps in App Center follow a pay-what-you-want model. Developers can put a suggested price on their apps, but users are free to choose 
any price they want, whether it's higher or lower than what's suggested. That does also include zero. You are never forced to pay for an application. But when an application that does have a payment available has an update available and you chose not to, you'll either need to select zero again to update it or you can offer a payment and you won't be reminded in that way again. So this lets users try out any app they want to for free, but also lets them be subtly reminded that they have not yet paid. App Center is great for developers too. The pay what you want model gives them a method of earning money from their work and the elementary team has put a lot of work behind the scenes into providing a system for developers to get started making apps as easily as possible. If you're a newcomer to Linux, or even if you have been a Linux user for quite some time, if you haven't tried elementary yet, I strongly encourage you to give it a try. That being said, whether you stick with it or not, that is ultimately up to you. Freedom of choice is one of the greatest things about Linux. If you do decide to give Elementary a try, you can find it over at elementary.io for any price that you choose.